you are in Toastmasters, you have so many opportunities to grow. Your communication, leadership, and confidence are all tapped and supported in an environment so friendly and humble. It makes public speaking less scary, more doable, and even fun, dare I say. That is why we are here tonight, to share our speeches, stories, and support in a new environment for most of us. Tonight you will see two speakers from around the district and also two evaluators. Our first speaker is Emmanuel Mayset, and he is doing speech number 10 from the Competent Communication Manual. The title of his speech is One Million Lights. Please welcome Emmanuel Mayset. Kumbo is a 10-year-old boy. He doesn't play video game, he doesn't have a computer, he never watch TV. In his home, Combo has no electricity. Combo doesn't live in Palo Alto. He lives in Kenya, Africa. Combo is from the tribe called the Maasai. If Combo had one request to improve his life, he would ask for one light. My fellow Toastmasters, should we give a light to Combo? That was the question that Anna, my friend and founder of One Million Light, asked me. And first I thought, compassion, what a great idea. She said, it's 25 bucks. I said, compassion, that's ridiculous. To convince me to make a donation, Anna challenged me to stay for one day without electricity. And I said, <laughs> that's easy. So I tried. And on the next day, I bought a light for Combo. 10,000 miles away, and a few days later, Combo finally received a package. He finally had a light to play, read, and study day and night. And that light became his most precious possession. He took it wherever he went. One day, as Combo is walking barefoot through the grassland of the savanna, with his friend Kimeli, Kimeli asked, Combo, what do you carry at your waist? Combo took this solar light and he said, this light is like the sun. By day, it captures and stores the sunlight so that by night, I can reuse it. Kimeli looked at the light and saw no battery, no wax to burn, no kerosene. And when he pushed the button, and when the light came out, he thought it was like magic. He immediately wanted to have one. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, unaware of what I took for granted, unaware of the impact I had on somebody's life, I was going about my daily routine. Anna came to me and said, Kimili wants one light. Kimili wants one light for everyone in his village. 200 lights, $25. I said, Anna, are you crazy? But it's on the next day that I realized I could help. You see, my coworkers reminded me of what I do best and what every Toastmasters do most. Talk. So I talked to my friends, I talked to parents and I talked at Toastmasters. And in a matter of weeks, and with the help of Anna, we raised enough donation for 200 lights. But this time, we were not going to ship them. This time, we were going to deliver them ourselves. You see, I always had that dream to be an adventurer. Go in the savannah with the elephants and the lions. But at the airport, I had goosebumps and I chickened out. Only Anna went. From San Francisco, she flew all the way to Kenya. At the airport, she rented a jeep and she started driving. And soon, she left the concrete pavement of the city for the dusty road of the savannah. She drove for hours 
And as she approached the village to meet Kiveli, Kimeli, there are hundreds of Maasai waiting for her. All of them dressed up with bright red tunics and spectacular beaded collars. For the Maasai, this was a day of celebration. When our engine stopped, they started a ceremony. The children came out of the house with cowbell and started rattling them against each other. While the women organized themselves in a large circle and started singing happy and cheerful songs. While the men, the warriors, entered the circle and they started dancing. They danced. They jumped. They leaped in the air like fish from the stream. When the singing and the dancing stopped, Anna distributed the light to each of the Maasai. And their face immediately lit up with a smile. Anna stayed with Kimili for the rest of the day. But at night, when she drove away, she got one last glimpse of the village. She said that night, that the savannah looked as if the stars had fallen onto the earth. The village was lit with light. My fellow Toastmasters, we have lit a Maasai village. But there are billions of people without electricity on this planet. And you can light another village. In Asia, Africa, South America, different places with different people, but with the same need, the same dream, and the same happy faces. Recently, I now received a letter from Ram in Kerala, India. Let me ask you now, should you give Ram Master. Thank you, Emmanuel. You are obviously very involved in non nonprofit causes. What else might bring a happy face to those you, you would like to give light to? Absolutely, good question. I think speaking for a cause is something that every Toastmaster should aspire instead of just speaking in their club weekly. No, there are a lot of ways to make people happy. It turns out that I was looking for inspiration for some of my speeches, and it turns out that nonprofit organizations are one of the best places to find that inspiration. How do you find the time for, for this kind of thing, with, like balancing your life with Toastmasters and work and, and other things? Well, it's just about doing a little and maybe organiz organizing yourself, but I just commit myself maybe one or two hours per week for this particular nonprofit organization. So it's not that big of a job. And for Toastmasters, it's just about the same. And your name of your club is? The name of my club is uh, Lee Emerson Bassett, which is at Stanford. And we meet at 7 PM on Wednesday night. Emmanuel Mason, everyone. Thank you. When you're in Toastmasters, we make it a point to give you immediate feedback. We call this evaluation. The point of evaluations is to identify what in the speech you liked, as well as maybe perhaps one or two things that you feel the speaker could improve on. And this is done to make sure the speaker grows, perhaps becomes a better speaker, leader, or even a better person. Evaluating Emmanuel's speech will be someone from the Next Step Toastmasters Club in Santa Clara, Please welcome Miriam Konia. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow members, dear viewers, and especially Emmanuel. Wow, what a powerful story. The purpose of today's speech was to inspire the audience, and you did not inspire me once. You inspired me three times 
throughout your speech. The first inspiration was when you told us about this little boy named Kamba. He lived in Kenya with no electricity, no computers, no games, and no lights. And then you told us how he received this special light. The second time you inspired me when you told me your personal story. You told me how you met Anna, the founder of One Million Lights nonprofit organization. And then you told us the story, you connect with us. And you told us what she did and how she lit up the entire village. The third time you inspired me was when you asked us a question. Do you want to light up another village? At that time, I was thinking, that would be so amazing if I can do that. Now, what is it you can do to make the speech even more powerful? Number one, you talked about the light, but you didn't describe it a little more. I didn't, didn't know what kind of lights they use. They have to use some sort of a light. You mentioned they burn kerosene, but what is the purpose of kerosene? It's very harmful to the environment and the pollution. and doesn't only affect Kenya. It affects the entire Earth that would connect with us. The second suggestion I might have for you is, you mentioned that you chicken out. It's great that you share that with us, but it diminishes the value of the purpose because you want to encourage us. How can we be encouraged if you chicken out? So I would suggest you not to mention that. The third suggestion is, you told us to buy lights, but how do I buy them? Give me a little more. Maybe you can mention one million lights throughout the entire speech. I'm familiar with the organization, so I knew what you were talking about. But everybody else, I can guarantee you maybe 1% of the people you are going to talk to know about One Million Lights. Mention that throughout your speech. But overall, I was inspired. I was totally inspired, and I want to buy the light. Even though I don't know where to buy it, I really want to buy it. Thank you very much for sharing the powerful story and lighting up cities around the world. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Miriam. And that is perhaps just the start of an evaluation that hopefully continues after the segment, after the night, and after the meeting. District 4 Toastmasters runs from San Francisco to Monterey and contains 220, 30, 40, 50, and counting clubs. Occasionally, we at Beta Vega Toastmasters get to go out and visit these clubs and do a little bit of segment on them. Tonight, or today, we are going to see a segment about Pro Masters, a community club that meets in the morning. Let's check it out. My club is a morning meeting club. We meet once a week, every week. We start at 7.30, we end at 8.30. We meet at a cafe called Mimi's. We meet in the back room. They're very, very gracious to let us have the back room. And we also have a dedicated weight person. Uh, Nancy has been our weight person since the inception of the club. She's wonderful. She knows us all. She'll order your meals as soon as she sees you walk in. We actually have made her an honorary member, so we pay for her membership for Nancy to be a club member. If your speech is engaging enough, they put down their fork <laughs> and they listen. <laughs> We definitely have a very friendly club. We all get along, we enjoy each other's company, which is part of the charm of this club. And it's not just about the speaking, it's about the leadership and getting to know people, networking for people who in this tough economic time may not have employment. Getting involved in Toastmasters gives you connections with people that do all sorts of things. We're very high energy, we're very supportive, we're very fun, and we're very humorous. I, for one, look forward to Thursday mornings, whether I have a role or not, because it's just so much fun. It's, we all care about each other in a way. It's kind of like coming to a party or a family reunion. It's really fun. Our club is, is very encouraging, and they encourage the new members to definitely take on their speeches quickly. Uh, it generates an interest and enthusiasm. And each additional uh, speech that you give bring on additional dimension. So by the time you finish 10, I believe, they try to make you a very uh, uh, well-rounded speaker. But also various dimensions of public speech, such as how do you evaluate a speaker? How do you listen? How do you do impromptu speech? At the same time, you also build network and connect with like-minded people who are interested in, in 
in improving themselves and uh, make each of us a better person. I'll be a Toastmaster for life, and why? I believe that we can always improve our skills. There are several areas in my public speaking that I still think I can improve. We sometimes are spilling out of our facility because we have so many people. People will show up, they'll come visit, and they'll join. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it to anyone. I, I love Toastmasters. I use the skill set every day in my public life as well as in my private life, and I encourage anybody who has an interest in public speaking or fear of public speaking, come check out a club. Join Toastmasters. Welcome back to Toastmasters Bay to Bay. I am your host, Chris Pond, from the Rhino Business Club. Our second speech tonight will be from Robert Tang. And Robert is doing project number five from the Competent Communication Manual called Your Body Speaks. He's got a real treat for us, too. The title of his speech is I Want to Kick Like Bruce Lee. Please welcome Robert Tang. Thank you, Chris. Wow. Having lived here in the Bay Area for, what, 10 years now, must have really softened me quite a bit because my body's immune system was no match to whatever virus was floating around in the East Coast when I visited there earlier this year to see family. It was not too long that I arrived in New York City. I got sick, and I mean really, really sick. So I guess you know, the only upside is you know, being sick and homebound at my parents' place let me watch a lot of their movies that they had. And one of my favorite was this one, Bruce Lee, the legend. Hello and welcome, everyone. I have been training in the Korean martial arts of Taekwondo for the past four years. And it really gave me a new appreciation when I kind of watched old Bruce Lee movies of what martial arts is all about and what made Bruce such a superstar on the big screen. For those who don't know of Bruce, he was actually born here in San Francisco. And he actually, you know, was acting in the US uh, in a minor role called Cato in a 60s uh, TV series called The Green Hornet. But it's only after he arrived in Hong Kong that he became a motion picture superstar in the martial arts Hong Kong film industry. And you know, with, you know, with my knowledge of martial arts, you know, what, what made Bruce such a badass fighter, huh? Was it his punches? Nah. Was it his, the sounds that he made? Yeah, when he stomps on a bad person? No. Was it the snare? No. Nope. Nor was it his mastery of weapons, like the use of nunchucks to hit a bad guy? I don't think so. In my opinion, what made Bruce such a formidable fighter were his legs. Yes, Bruce's legs were his weapons of mass destruction to the bad guys. He was deceptively fast. He can uh, kick up low and high. And he also has a good sense of balance while kicking. My martial arts of Taekwondo is all about kicking. And that's why I like to kick like Bruce. So far, the only thing I master is you know, staying balanced on one leg, which I think is a good start. 
Well, seriously, so in my years of martial arts, you know, training had kind of taught me uh, something about life, which I'd like to share with you all. It's not, it's not about punching or kicking. It's about focus and dedication. And let me put Bruce aside for a minute. And let me tell you about what really inspired me to continue with my training, especially at the black belt level, are, are people that has this focus and determination. And two individuals you might know, one is Natalie Portman, and the other person is Mark Wahlberg. Natalie Portman recently won an Oscar for her portrayal of a ballerina in the movie The Black Swan. But I bet you didn't know that she had no formal training in ballet when she was selected to star in that movie. She trained five to eight hours a day for one year before filming that movie. Mark Warburg, realistic portrayal of a boxer in the movie The Fighter, earned him high praise as well. He trained for four years, from eight to 10 hours a day, without even knowing whether the movie was gonna be made or not. That's focus and dedication, which these two individuals represented. So, and in, you know, in my training of martial arts, I think, you know, we can all learn from being focused and dedicated. Who knows that? Being sick and watching a whole bunch of you know, kung fu movie, movies kind of lead you to reflect a little bit in life. Because I was, you know, I was not a teenager like Bruce when he started learning martial arts. So my message to all of you is, it's never too late to learn something new or to find a new purpose in life. It's always interesting to find a passion and make that part of your life. Who knows? You might actually, you know, uh, be a more interesting person or live a longer life. Though I may not be like Bruce, I just want to kick like Bruce, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Robert, for that nonviolent speech. <laughs> you had a lot of demonstrations uh, with your body and something I want to learn when I'm not in a suit. Have you ever accidentally hit somebody or kicked someone? The, the way I saw it was, all I did was just lift my leg when I turned behind and the person just ran into my leg. So I don't know whether that's kicking or not. <laughs> Seriously, that happened. It did? Yes. Tell us more about that. Uh, uh, I don't want to get into trouble, but you know, I was, you know, he was you know, probably this high and at least seven years old, and I was just playing with him. I was like, okay, okay, all right, all right, let me just go like this. The next thing I know, he ran into my leg, and then my master asked me to leave the class that night. Okay. And what club are you from? I'm with two clubs in Foster City here, Foster City Toastmasters and Pro Toasties. Robert Tang, everyone. And now, evaluating Robert Tang's speech will be a member from Milpitas Toastmasters and distinguished Toastmaster herself. Please welcome Sharon Corgile. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, and thank you, Robert, for an energetic and entertaining speech. It was humorous, it had a lot of energy, and it was visually stimulating as well as interesting to our ears. So I enjoyed it very much, and I, I noticed that the audience appeared to enjoy it as, as much as I did. Now, I have complimented you, but I do have a couple of suggestions that I think might move it even higher, even higher than that last kick you did. <laughs> and that is when you said focus. When you mentioned focus, how much you admired that about Bruce and about Natalie and Mark Wahlberg. And that's what I'd like you to bring to your speech, a little tighter focus so that instead of bringing in the focus and dedication aspect at the end, let's move it up to the top so we know where you're going, so we know why you like Bruce Lee, not just because he was, I thought, cute and really <laughs> you know, charismatic, but he had some qualities that you really admired that led him on to become the legend that he is. 
what, 30, 20 something years after his death. So that would be my biggest suggestion for you, focus. The other thing is to work on your transitions because you've had several different segments of the story. So if you find a way to kind of knit them all together, Bruce Lee is important to the story, perhaps the beginning not quite so important. So pump Bruce up in the beginning. Talk about what you admired about him, those characteristics of focus and dedication that made him a star. And then go on to tell us how that applies not only to you, but how we also apply it to us. And I think if you do that, that speech will just be one high kick after another, after another. And you will stimulate our minds, our hearts, and entertain us at the same time. It was a wonderful job. Uh, I look forward to, I don't know if you're black belt already, but I'd like to see another demonstration of that. It was really fun. So thank you so much, and I look forward to speech number two. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Sharon. And that is an evaluation from a distinguished Toastmaster. When I first joined Toastmasters two years ago, and before I met Sharon, there was a gentleman who was 87 years old, and he was a DTM, Distinguished Toastmaster, the highest possible award in Toastmasters. And I thought, is that how long it takes to get one of these things? But I was delighted to see that this club gives you as many opportunities as you want to, to really grow as fast as you can. And they give you the million lights to do whatever, to kick and to grow and to be a better speaker. If you'd like to join us in the studio, please look at our, please welcome us, please look at our previous episodes on d4tm.org, you can join us anytime. And I'd like to wrap it up by saying bid you adieu, and may your, all your speeches break a leg.